evening. I'm Paige Roberts, President and CEO of the Jackson County Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to our first municipal forum here at the Pascagoula Senior Center. It is the Chamber's Government and Public Policy Committee that is honored to host this hybrid version created specifically for 2021. Each candidate will have two minutes to introduce themselves. We have written 10 questions. Each candidate will get two minutes to answer them. This is how it will work. We will draw one of the 10 questions for each candidate. But as we ask, after we an, ask that question, we will put it back in for the opportunity for that question to be asked again. So what that means is there are some of the 10 questions that may not get asked at all. And then there are some of the 10 questions that may get asked more than once. What I suggest to the candidates is that if there is a question you do not get asked, but you would like to answer, use some of your three minutes of closing time to do that. You will each have three minutes in closing at the end. Another issue we have is that we will be taking questions from the audience, but not the in-person audience, only from the virtual audience. If you have a question and you are watching this from either Facebook or the WGUD YouTube channel, please pose your questions there. If the candidates have answered their four questions that were pre-prepared, and by the way, each candidate received the 10 questions uh, before today. So they have seen the 10 questions. If they have finished answering each of their four questions before 6.30, we will start taking questions from the audience. When we get to 6.45, we will begin the closing time. So no more questions will be asked after 6.45. For the candidates, in your two minutes, both for introduction and for question answering, I will put up a sign. I will be sitting here next to our moderator. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. In the last three minutes for your closing, you will get a one minute warning as well as a 30 second warning. So keep that in mind. Please note there are three candidates who could not join us this evening. Unfortunately, they each had family conflicts and they ranged from anything from um, having something to do with their children to quite frankly, a family tragedy that happened unexpectedly over the weekend. I suggest that you out in Facebook and YouTube land have a candidate that you would like to know why they're not here, please reach out to that candidate individually so they may have that conversation in the way that they choose as we find that inappropriate for us to handle from the chamber's side. Okay, now the moderator. We are pleased to have with us as our moderator this evening, Deborah Quave. Deborah is the CEO of Deborah Quave Enterprises. She is an author and motivational speaker who is passionate about expressing the power of communication in a way that uplifts the marginalized and disenfranchised. In 2014, she founded Use Your Words, The Movement, an initiative aimed at restoring the art of communication by creating platforms for unheard voices to be heard. Since the inception of Use Your Words, Deborah has delivered her messages of communicative restoration in schools, youth programs, retreats, and conferences around this country and abroad in Israel and the United Kingdom. She is the host of The Weekly Word, a Facebook Live show that airs, airs Wednesdays at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time on her Deborah Quave page. Deborah's motto is be the light that shines the light and gives the light to the world. Thank you, Deborah, for being here to moderate for us. And so I will now turn it over to Deborah to begin the introductions. Thank you, Paige, for that warm introduction. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we have Mr. Patrick Gatchel, Dr. Johnny Walker, Mr. Burt Hill, and Mr. Chris Langston. 
Gentlemen, you all will have two minutes to introduce yourselves and, yeah, two minutes. Hold on one second. I have to get to the time. Paige will be our timer. Okay, here we go. Go, Patrick. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Paige. Thank you, Deborah, for having me here this, uh, this evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Gatchel. I'm running for Pascagoula City Councilman at large. Uh, a little bit about myself. I grew up here in Pascagoula. I graduated from Pascagoula High School in 1999. Uh, while I was in high school, I uh, participated in a lot of different sports, but the thing that uh, really worked out for me well was uh, public service in the way of being a Boy Scout. I rose to the rank of Eagle Scout, and that helped propel me to the United States Naval Academy. I graduated from there in 2003 and went on to serve my nation on uh, multiple vessels built here in Pascagoula. The uh, USS Bunker Hill and uh, the USS Pelu. I served uh, multiple deployments, two different deployments at, uh, in the um, Global War on Terrorism time frame. Uh, upon completion of that, uh, I moved, uh, I was stationed in uh, Northern Virginia. At that time I got married um, and uh, started to work up there. That started uh, about 12 years in government finance experience working at the National Reconnaissance Office. In that time I earned a master's degree in public policy or uh, from the School of Public Policy at the University of Maryland. Uh, I also had three kids, uh, three young sons, and uh, we tried very hard to move home, uh, and that opportunity came for us in 2000, 2007, 2018. We were, able, we were able to move home. My wife is also from Pascagoula, and it was a huge blessing for us to get down here back to the coast. Uh, uh, since I moved home, I work at Ingalls uh, I work at Ingalls Shipyard. I work in program management, helping to plan and build ships for our, for our country. Um, I see this opportunity to run as a way to give back to the community that helped make me who I am and an opportunity to set a great example for my kids uh, and uh, other people my age to get involved in the, uh, in the civic service. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Next we have Dr. Journey Walker for Ward 3. Hi guys, my name is Johnny Walker. Again, I'm running for City Council for Ward 3. I'm a lifelong resident of Pascagoula, born and raised here. The uh, graduated from Pascagoula High School. I'm a veteran of the United States Air Force. Uh, I got my uh, first degree at South Alabama. Went on, I've got, I have a degree in nursing from William Carey, and I'm also a doctor of chiropractic. Uh, like I said, I've been a lifelong resident here. I volunteered my time being a baseball coach for probably 15 to 20 years uh, with the youth as far as kids go. It's one of my passions with my family, it kind of lets me enjoy time with my sons uh, and also involving them with the things that they love. Uh, Unlike a lot of people here, never thought I wanted to be a politician. Just through some of the changes, you know, COVID-related issues, uh, it really got me stirring. Some of the things that I've watched government, including our local governments, grow a little bit too large. Uh, they become intrusive, and it's something that I really, really would like to change. So, again, I'm Johnny Walker. I'm running for city council. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always get me at my office. Again, I've been a small business owner for over 20 years. Uh, I'm available through email, phone, or even just walk into my office. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walker. Next, we have Bert Hill from Ward 4. Good evening. And since it's close to St. Patrick, Patrick's Day, and I knew Alma would have it decorated for St. Patrick's Day, I tried to wear something a little festive, <laughs> since we have to wear a mask. Thank y'all for being here tonight. It's always a pleasure to get up in at the Senior Center and visit with people. Uh, I wish they had been open more in the last year, but uh, circumstances have shut down you know, our economy and a lot of other things, so we're all just doing what we have to do. Amen? I'm a lifelong resident of Jackson County. I didn't grow up in Pascagoula, but I got here as quick as I could. Uh, I've lived here for 50 years now, and uh, my wife and I have both retired somewhat. Um, she retired from the hospital, and I retired from the, from the uh, 
High School Activities Association, where I worked 30 years refereeing football and basketball for our youth in the high school and junior college. And I retired uh, after 23 years uh, as the general manager of the Pascagoula Country Club. That was an adventure, uh, having to deal with golfers every day. I don't know if y'all play golf or your husbands play golf or what, but that's, a, that's an adventure, but I loved every minute of it. And I still go down there. My wife's down there tonight playing, playing bunco with the ladies. So we're still active in the community. Uh, I enjoy playing football, I mean, uh, refereeing football. I've trained officials that uh, went on to the Division One, and now we have one lady here from Pascagoula that's in the NFL that worked the Super Bowl, and I took her to her first high school game as my clock operator. So I got a lot of uh, business going on here in Pascagoula, uh, and not that I'm getting paid for it, but just I'm, I, I do a lot of activities, and uh, it's, it's always great to give back to the community, and that's why probably all four of us are up here trying to give back to the city of Pascagoula. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Next, we have Chris Langston from Ward 5. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank the, the Jackson County Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. Uh, I'm certainly proud to be here. Uh, I'm running for City Council Ward 5. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I was born and raised right here in Pascagoula. Uh, it's a graduate of uh, Pascagoula High School. Uh, just 17 years old, I decided I wanted to embark on a career in the United States Air Force. Uh, so I loaded up the bus and off to uh, San Antonio I went. Uh, I still remember uh, walking out under those lights and having those guys yell and scream at me. As I turned around and looked, that bus was driving away. I said, well, there goes my ride. So, but uh, I certainly enjoyed uh, my 25 year tenure. Uh, I was taught from the beginning a set of core values that, uh, that still resonate with me today. And that's integrity first, service for self, and integrity and excellence in all we do. Uh, so I spent 25 years in the Air Force doing what I loved and finally decided it was time for me to hang my hat up. So, and I knew I was always gonna come back to Pascagoula. So six years ago, that's exactly what I did. I moved back here to Pascagoula. And within just a few weeks, I found myself employed at, uh, out here at the English Shipbuilding, uh, helping deliver uncompromised products to our nation's warfighters. It's something I take great pride in. Uh, and not only working here at Ingalls, um, I got myself involved with many uh, civic organizations, men's clubs, uh, young men's business clubs, um, uh, cruising the coast, all of which I, I enjoyed every little bit of it. All have one common goal of making Pascagoula a better place. I'm certainly glad to be here and look forward to all the questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Now we will begin the predetermined questions. Again, candidates, these are the questions that were emailed to you. You each will have answer four questions, two minutes apiece. The first question will go to Patrick Gatchel, candidate for at large. And just as a reminder, not all questions will be asked of each candidate, but some candidates may be asked the same question twice. Patrick, of all the cities along the three lower, lower counties of South Mississippi, Pascagoula has the highest percentage of population decline in the past decade. What specifically must be done in order to halt the decline and then reverse it into population growth? You have two minutes. Thank you for the question. Um, this, uh, this particular question hits home for me. Uh, when we were in Virginia for 12 years, uh, we were constantly trying to get home and uh, we were constantly told that when, when you moved home, you don't want to be in Pascagoula, uh, which kind of stung me as, uh, as a, a Pascagoula resident and uh, a graduate from Pascagoula High School. And, um, and since I've been home, I, I could personally could not be happier about living in this town. Uh, there's so many different opportunities, so many different resources that we have here that make this a wonderful place to live. Uh, so when, you, when I think about the things that other people see, the perception that other folks have about the town, uh, and how can we, how can we improve that? Uh, one of the biggest things that we always hear, uh, how do you deal with the, uh, the insurance costs? And I know that that's a problem that we all face in town, high insurance. 
And, um, and one of the things that we need to do is, uh, as, a, as a town, as a council, as a city, uh, utilize every resource that we have at the county, federal, and uh, state level to try and address the different uh, issues that are causing that insurance to, to, to stay high. Uh, another, uh, another issue that we hear about are, is, uh, is our taxes. And um, taxes are, are high right now, and we, I think we all know why. But um, in order to lower those taxes, we need to have a very good financial plan for our city. So developing of a good financial plan, not just to, uh, to take us over the next couple of years, but maybe five, 10 years down the road. And with that plan, we can, um, we can uh, utilize our assets in town and pay down some of, the, um, some of the bills and some of the debt that we have in order to, to reduce some of that millage and, uh, and uh, reduce what I see are those two main issues that scare people off when they move to Pascagoula. When you get here, you realize what a special place this is and you'll want to stay for as long as you possibly can. Uh, like my father who moved, moved here 50 years ago and uh, hasn't left yet. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have Dr. Johnny Walker from Ward 3. Dr. Walker, what is more important for our city right now? Building new homes and commercial spaces or rehabbing, expanding, better utilizing our existing homes and storefronts? Again, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna pick and choose. I think they're both important. The, uh, I'm going to expand on some things that he said, the, uh, and I agree with a lot of what Patrick just said. The, uh, unless we get our foothold on bringing small businesses here, getting some you know, somebody to invest in Pascagoula, you're not going to see this redevelopment that everybody wants. We've got to spend some time trying to convince businesses to open up, make it easy for them, whether we have to use some type of tax abatement or something to incentivize businesses to come back to this community. Uh, another thing that we have, you know, we don't need more beach houses, you know, or, or, or homes for the, for the wealthy. You know, we've also had a, a lot of Section 8 houses available already. What we really need to start seeing is some of these middle class families coming back to Pascagoula. The, um, and so I think it's a good opportunity for us Pascagoula has so many things to offer the entire world to bring businesses here. We've got Chevron, we've got Ingalls, we have Singing River Hospital, we have these great industries. But not only that, we have one of the best ports in the United States, and it's underutilized. I would like to see Pascagoula do something to actually expand the port use. Uh, and when we do things like this, and we can bring some of these businesses back in, you know, hopefully see some nightlife come back to Pascagoula, some restaurants come into Pascagoula. When we have those types of things, we'll see people come that want to stay, that want to bring their kids here and grow up. And that's the thing that I've always loved about Pascagoula. I was born here, I was raised here, and like he said, I never wanted to move away. I always wanted to come back to this. This small town is one of the greatest places in the world, and I would love to see it grow and be successful again. Thank you. Mr. Burt, you can go ahead and make your way to the podium. The city of Pascagoula's population is half white, a third black, and 12% Hispanic. How do you plan to ensure representation of all segments of the population in your role as a city official? Well, I never have looked at color or race to determine any of my factors. So what we first have to do is forget how to hate because people won't get the hate out of their heart about the different races and different colors. There should be only one race, the human race is the way I look at it. And uh, we should open our doors to anybody that wants to come live here whether they're black, white, Hispanic, uh, Asian, 
it shouldn't matter. If, if they're willing to come to Pascagoula, Mississippi, or anywhere in Mississippi for that fact, if they're willing to come here, raise a family, get a job, go to work, earn a living, pay taxes, um, you know, they, the door should be open for anybody. We shouldn't discriminate in any way. Uh, I just, I just don't know when the hate is going to stop. There's so much talk about, you know, this and this. This hate, somebody hates this. Somebody doesn't like black. Somebody doesn't like Hispanic. Somebody hates whites. It's all about get the hate out of your heart. Let's be a human race instead of being different colors. We can live together. We have for years. It's just been kind of ugly at times. And, and we just got to make it better. People have to get that feelings off their sleeve. Get their feelings hurt so easy they get uh, you know they get colorblind I guess you say but un until people love one another they'll never love themselves so come to Pascagoula be treated equally get a job go to work pay taxes buy groceries visit Wayne Lee's visit Jerry Lee's visit Walmart we have good restaurants come visit we need you we want you don't hesitate. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Linkson from Ward 5. Chris, what do you consider Pascagoula's greatest selling point and how do you plan to leverage that point to revitalize residential and commercial growth? Um, and that's an easy question. Our greatest selling point is our, pe it's, it's our people. It's the citizens of Pascagoula. Uh, that's, everything we do starts with the people. Uh, as residents, we have to shine with each other, whether you're from you know, Ward 5, Ward 1, whatever. We have to, we have to work together and we have to, you know, create these these civic organizations, as well as the city leaders have got to engage with these city organizations and these residents, to, you know, to tackle what they want and what they need, and what the city needs overall. Because if our communities can't grow, then our cities won't grow. So it, it definitely depends on our uh, the residents. And having been out and about and knocking on doors and getting to meet people. I, you know, I already knew that they were the greatest people already, but having get, get, you know, taken a chance to meet them and talk with them, I really realized how great they are. So Pastor Gula has to, has to make decisions to where we're, we're taking care of the communities first and looking out for, you know, for our own, and then we'll, I think from that point we'll certainly grow and, uh, and prosper together. So I think it's easily the people are most important. Okay. Thank you. Patrick, you can make your way up to the podium. If you're just tuning in, we are on question five with Patrick Gatchel. Okay, and this is the first repeat question. Patrick, what is more important for our city right now? building new homes and commercial spaces, or rehabbing, expanding, better utilizing our existing homes and storefronts? I believe uh, in a balanced approach when it comes to this, uh, this question. Uh, Pascagoula has three different historic districts. Uh, we are a Preserve America uh, community, which means that we need to look to our older buildings, our historic buildings, and utilize those for economic growth and um, community re revitalization, I believe is uh, the way they put it. Um, what that means in those historic districts, we need to make sure that we maintain that aesthetic. We need to maintain our identity. Uh, I know the downtown, they're trying to make that historic area as well. Uh, so any new growth would be in those areas, I feel would benefit from revitalizing the buildings there. Now for areas where uh, we are not under historical uh, regulations, uh, new growth is great and um, new homes uh, when you move into the area, the home market here is very tight. Normally, a lot of the homes hit the market and are sold before, they're, uh, before anyone can actually uh, get to, to uh, multiple offers can go in. So what we need uh, is some new construction in the home area. 
and there are certain areas in town where there's some vacant lots that we've that uh, are holdovers from Katrina as well and those would be ideal places for someone to come in and to, to build some new homes some new places with some modern amenities some floor plans that people are used to seeing outside of Pascagoula uh, and that are drawing people to other communities in West Mobile and other parts of Jackson County so a balanced approach I think is necessary when we're looking at any kind of growth in our town thank you Dr. Johnny Walker from Ward 3. Dr. Walker, what do you consider the city's greatest challenge and how do you overcome it? Again, as a small business owner for over 20 years, I look at what's happened in Pascagoula over the last decade. And like we talked about earlier, it's the lack of population growth. We've been declining. I think that's probably the biggest challenge. And it's not going to change unless we become more small business friendly. We've got to do things to actually lure small businesses to want to come. You know, trying to get the community involved in doing community things would be nice. Um, but we've got to do a, a couple of things to help to get, to get small businesses to come back. I don't know if y'all know this, and again, I'm saying this without somebody who absolutely loves this town. You come into Pascagoula, and you, you do, you have some of these dilapidated looking buildings as soon as you come into this, in, into our town. It would be nice to see the city start making some of these owners, you know, re you fix up some of these buildings. And if they don't have the means to do it, then, you know, maybe the city has to take part of it and get start getting some of these things done. And then going back and making the owners pay the city back for it. We've got to do something. Uh, to, to again to get small businesses back in here that's the only way we're going to get growth and that's i think what the biggest challenge is is trying to get people to come back thank you dr walker mr burt from ward four thank you mr hill what is unique about your ward We're still recovering from Katrina, believe it or not, because my ward goes all the way down to the beach, and if you'll ride down the beach, down Washington Avenue, you'll still see empty houses, empty lots, that uh, people just, when Katrina hit, they moved away, or they moved somewhere north, or somewhere to get away from the uh, surge of the water. Uh, my ward is, uh, it has the only golf course in town, which is uh, unique. <laughs> Uh, since I worked there for 23 years, and uh, it was a great place for people to come visit. Uh, now, the yacht club's on the other end. It's in, I think, Ward 3, so, but uh, we have a lot of members that go to both of them, so that's unique. They're, they switch back and forth their memberships to the yacht club and the country club, but uh, we do have a beach, a beach park. Uh, there's a lot of activities go on down there. Uh, sometimes uh, late at night there's some activities that shouldn't go on and the police have to be called like a lot of other places in town but it's very unique it has great housing I will say most most of the housing that's never got too much damage in Katrina is uh, north of Ingalls Avenue uh, I got three foot of water in my house uh, during that time uh, and I had to rebuild my house and the country club at the same time which was a mess, but uh, you know we're starting to recover 100, well, not 100 percent, but it's getting there. Everybody's uh, chipping in when they need some help; they can get it. Uh, when they need material, they could get it, and uh, it's it's coming back. And uh, it's glad I'm glad to see that most of the houses in my neighborhood are occupied now. There was several that weren't, but uh, it's getting better. And I think if we work together, do things, uh, and invite people here to let them look at the place. They'll start building and buying in Pascagoula. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Langston from Ward 5. You're up for question eight. Chris, 
What do you consider the city's greatest challenge and how do you overcome it? Uh, the greatest challenge I think right now, as we all know, if you've been here for a while, uh, we're still paying back uh, some debt that we owe. So we're, you know, if you look at it from this standpoint, we're, it'd be starting already in the hole. So we certainly have to, uh, uh, to do, to, you know, streamline our operations, uh, continue to, you know, give the top-down approach look to see how we're spending our money, uh, you know, within our organizations, uh, within our department heads, um, to, to, I guess, to pay that relief back as quickly as we possibly could so that we can in turn turn that revenue into positive impacts, more positive impacts for, uh, for the city of Pascagoula. But that doesn't stop us from having the ability to grow and to, you know, and to help repay that debt quicker and to, you know, you know, when he was talking about doing something to, you know, to have a place of inviting for these other businesses and these other uh, investors to come in here and want to invest in the Pascagoula. So we have to create this, this doctrine of courtesy to make it easier for those people to come here and make it easier for them to invest. But we also have, you know, as a city, we've got to give them, you know, the opportunities and we've got to create an environment that's warm, clean, and inviting. So I think that's important uh, for the city of Pasquale. Thank you, Chris. Patrick Gatchel? From at large, we are on round three of questions. What do you feel about the state of homelessness in Pascagoula? These issues both impact quality of life for residents and the experience of visitors to our city. What will you do as councilmen to improve beautification, address vagrancy, and improve quality of life? And would you back city support for homelessness programs? You have two minutes. Thank you, that's a big question. The, um, uh, I'll start at the, the end there. I 100% would support uh, a city program to address homelessness. Um, I, I know that our city is working from very from many different organizations working from different angles trying to address this issue it's a very complex issue and there's no simple answer to it there's no one thing that we can do uh, I know that the through through uh, through law enforcement through our police department through open doors through various churches and through the city government we've, we're trying very hard and I believe good progress has been made on uh, on the state of homelessness in our city uh, uh, with term in, in way of uh, beautification, I know there are also many organizations in town that work towards beautification. Uh, Pascagoula Pride and even the uh, Jackson County Chamber of Commerce, who so graciously put this event on, uh, has reached out to community uh, business owners to uh, help beautify storefronts, um, which are also affected by some of the vagrancy issues. Vagrancy is also very difficult. It's something that's very hard to legislate and correct through law enforcement, but. Um, enabling our police officers to go out and do their jobs and address issues, uh, address uh, times when it becomes invasive to a business owner, to a homeowner, to a taxpayer, a citizen, uh, is, is probably one of the best ways to handle the vagrancy issue. Uh, like I said, there is no easy way to fix this. A lot of people, a lot with, with very, very good and caring people in town have, have, are trying hard to fix this issue. and. Um, you know, uh, it just takes time and, uh, and and going after it on an individual by individual basis as there's no one reason that puts someone in, in a homeless situation. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Dr. Johnny Walker from Ward 3. Of all the cities along the three lower counties of South Mississippi, Pascagoula has the highest percentage of population decline in the past decade. What specifically must be done in order to halt the decline and then reverse it into population growth? Again, I kind of answered this question a few minutes ago. Um, <clears throat> a few things we've got to do. Our schools are a lot, they're, they're getting better. 
but we can still improve on our schools. So let our schools become uh, more exceptional. We have to lure small businesses back into this community. We really need some type of nightlife for the adults, but also something for, you, for the kids to do. Uh, we've got to start doing things that actually make people want to come here. The, uh, I'm a huge fan, again, of, of, of citywide uh, uh, recreational development. Uh, I think one of the funnest things to do is when Pastor Gula puts on the, on the movies down at the beach. The, uh, you know, and you, it's a surprising how many people show up. The, uh, I love to see things like that. It involves the community uh, and what this city has to offer. You know, you get to overlook the most beautiful views in the world. Uh, I don't know how y'all feel about our Gulf Coast, but, you know, I love it. I can't imagine living anywhere else. Every time I've moved away from here, whether it's just going to school or anything else, it's the first thing that I miss. I miss the views. I miss riding by the beach in the morning time. Um, but at the end of the day, we have to do things to get businesses to want to come back here. I think it's ridiculous that Pascagoula can't support a Chili's or, or a restaurant at, of that nature, but we can have three McDonald's. We've got to do something to actually want to get small businesses back up and running. Thank you, Dr. Walker. Mr. Burt Hill from Ward 4. Burt, what do you consider Pascagoula's greatest selling point, and how do you plan to leverage that point to revitalize residential and commercial growth? Pascagoula has two large assets and it was already been mentioned, one of them, but our citizens are our biggest asset. And if you get to know them, you'll realize that, that that's our biggest asset here is the citizens live here. And as far as uh, getting down to commercial, our second biggest asset that a lot of cities in this country don't have is water. We have waterways that can bring ships in here. I can remember when watching the grain elevator unload and load ships full of corn and soybeans and stuff, that's gone. That place over there could, could be used for something to haul some type of merchandise in and out of here. But the waterways, we wouldn't have Chevron if we didn't have the waterways. Uh, hauling oil and gas and all those type of petrol supplies in and out of here. You know, uh, without that, there wouldn't be a Chevron. Uh, we wouldn't have a shipyard if we didn't have the waterways. So our biggest assets are our individuals that live here. They're great people. I mean, the ones that have, have stuck by and, and held on to Pascagoula as a home, or they're like family. Uh, even you asked me about my neighborhood a while ago, my ward. It's like family over there. Uh, people come to our house, uh, holidays, like we had over 300 people come to our house Halloween. It's got to, you got to treat everybody like family and friends, you know, and it doesn't matter uh, if they come from Goche or they come from Grand Bay to, to go bring their kids into Pascagoula. They see what we have to offer, they may come back. They may come back just for Halloween, but they may come back. So uh, I think uh, two big assets. Our individuals that live here have to promote the city, and we have to have some growth, and we have to have some big commercial growth come in here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burt. Chris Langston from Ward 5. <laughs> of all the cities along the three lower counties of South Mississippi, Pascagoula has the highest percentage of population decline in the past decade. What specifically must be done in order to halt the decline and then reverse it into population growth? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think we need to look at what we're doing wrong uh, and, uh, and what we're doing right. Um, we certainly need to come up with ideas that, uh, that invite not only residents, 
but you know, as we as Johnny spoke a while ago, we got to figure out how to get these investors. We got to figure out how to get these uh, these businesses to invest in our town. And it, it kind of starts when I mentioned the the question I answered previously. It, it starts with the people. It starts with the with the, their own pride and their own sense of community. That's where it starts, uh, and that has to carry through uh, our civic organizations, our city leaders, uh, and our and our business storefronts. Uh, we have got to give a place that is that is warm and inviting, and we've got to give them the opportunities. If, if, if we're not doing that, then it makes no sense for them to stay here. If everything, you drive around town and everything is in disarray and it's not, we're letting everything go, then when these investors show up to our town to invest, there's, there's no reason for them to invest here. It's just not, it's not appealing for them. So why would they waste their time and efforts? Why would they waste their monies you know, to invest in this town? So once again, it all starts with community. It all starts with the people. We have to engage with those people and engage with our investors to provide an environment, a location, and the resources for them to want to invest in Pascagoula. That's what we all want. Thank you, Chris. We're now beginning round four with Patrick Gatchel from At Large. Patrick, what do you consider the city's greatest challenge and how would you overcome it? Uh, <clears throat> I have to say, uh, and I kind of touched on one of my previous answers, it's, it's perception. It's what people think about Pascagoula. Um, people have a form an opinion about our town and then look for some small piece of evidence to prove their point or to, to prove themselves right. Um, time and time and again, I've described where I live to people uh, who aren't from here and they cannot believe the, the place that I'm talking about. Uh, the natural resources, the natural beauty, the, um, uh, the, the, the facilities, the school facilities that we have, the fact that we, our school, our town can hold, um, can support two different schools, a public and a private school, and we have school choice in town is, uh, is also something, and affordable, that, uh, that, uh, that people just cannot believe. Uh, fighting that perception. Uh, things that you hear, uh, the once great Pascagoula, you'll hear that, or oh, that's just a blue collar town. And anyone who lives here knows that we are more than just a simple little label, that we're more than just a, a throwaway town or some place that used to be wonderful. This place is, is, a, is a special, special place, and everyone who comes to visit, and I've had friends from, from Texas, California, Ohio, Pennsylvania, all have come here and are just wowed by this place. And when they get here, they say, I get it. I understand. I understand why you're here. I understand why you chose to raise your kids here. And if I had the choice, if it worked out for me, I'd move to a place just like this. Um, so fighting that perception, getting people to see what Pascagoula is, uh, that I think that is is one of our biggest challenges. And uh, and if I could take everybody on a personal tour of town and show them what it means to me, I'd do it. Um, but I just uh, it might not work out logistically. But I just I think perception is something we have to fight. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Dr. Johnny Walker, you can come to the podium. Dr. Walker, what is unique about Ward 3? Uh, I guess the uniqueness about Ward 3 is it literally is a neighborhood. Everybody's talking about walking, you know, walking their, their, their wards and meeting people. Uh, it's amazing to me, every time you knock on somebody's door, they're so friendly, you know. It's amazing, you know, you can knock on somebody's door and they're happy to see you. You know, I haven't been turned away, I haven't been, uh, somebody has not looked at me like, why are you here? It's just super, super friendly. The, uh, and we have such a diversified ward, you know, you can look at everybody from, you know, youthful adults with their families all the way up to senior citizens. Black, Hispanic, whites, you know, all living in these neighborhoods together, and it's a beautiful thing. The, uh, it was mentioned that we have the Yacht Club in our, in our ward. Uh, you know, uh, Yacht Club is a place to go, tennis is available, swimming pools, uh, and it's a place where everybody can kind of, you know, commune. The, uh, 
I'm absolutely blessed to live in Ward 3, and I appreciate everybody who's willing to vote for me, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Walker. Next we have Bert Hill from Ward 4. Bert, what is more important for our city right now, building new homes and commercial spaces, or rehabbing, expanding, and better utilizing our existing homes and storefronts? And that's a good question too, but maybe we need a little bit of both. There's a lot of houses in town that need repair work and renovating, some that hadn't hardly been touched since Katrina. And uh, I had a little argument, not an argument, we had a discussion with one of the councilmen that he said, oh, we're over Katrina. I said, I disagree. I had to get a second mortgage on my house and I'm not over that yet, so don't tell me I'm over Katrina. Uh, when I had to go borrow money because my, I didn't have flood insurance. And when you get three foot of water in your house, you're not over Katrina unless you've paid it off since then. <laughs> so uh, we've got a lot of things to do to keep, keep up the houses we have, but maybe get some repair work on, done on some of the houses. Some of the dilapidated buildings or the vacant buildings, and we've got one right in my neighborhood almost, it's uh, the old Fred's building. Now I see them doing some work on it, I don't know what's coming there. I hadn't heard yet, but I've been seeing some activity around there. So maybe they're going to open that up again and put a business in there. That would be great. I don't know what. Uh, they pop these dollar gentles up all over the place. And, <laughs> and I mean, they just plant one here and there, and they grow everywhere. Uh, so maybe they're going to open it back up, and that'll revitalize that community a little bit. I don't know that Jerry Lee's needs the business down there, but uh, it might help the neighborhood out. So anyway, we've got to do a lot. Uh, we've, got to, we've got to fix up what's there, build some new ones, fill up some of these empty lots, get some people to move back to Pascagoula. And like I said a while ago, our biggest asset are our, 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 what people sitting right here tonight and everybody else that lives here. Our residents here are our biggest asset. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Langston from Ward 5. We have a new question for you. How do you plan to involve residents in the decision making? I'm sorry. How do you plan to involve residents in the decision making process in Pascagoula? Um, once again, I think I spoke about that. Is it's through community engagement. Uh, how do we, and it's gonna take not just myself, but each, uh, each city leader would have to, I don't wanna say not by themselves, but as a group, engage with those communities uh, to kind of, you know, to, to gather their strengths, to gather their ideas, gather their wants and needs, and see, you know, what it is they, where it is they wanna see the city go, and ensure that we're properly representing uh, those citizens, uh, you know, and, and getting on the same, same path to economic growth and to having uh, our city be just as good as any other city uh, in Pascagoula. So I, I think uh, I, having been involved in uh, some of the civic orders like the, the, the Pascagoula Men's Club, uh, it's those type of people and those type of things that get out and about and uh, organize with, uh, with people in need or people who want to help or people have projects they want to take care of. Those kind of organizations are out there that, you know, that we should be able to tap into. Uh, and if, if, if there's something that, that we're too busy to tackle or something that's a, that's a lower level task that, uh, that we don't have time to spend on because we're busy with a larger task. We've got to be able to tap into those organizations uh, to go out and, and take care of some of the, the projects that we need and get these other communities or get these other uh, residents engaged and uh, get them out and about. So, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. We have re time for two more rounds, so you're in luck. <laughs> this time came from the fact that there were no public questions from the YouTube or Facebook, so we're going to continue on with the process. All right, Patrick Gatchel from At Large. 
How do you plan to involve residents in the decision-making process in Pascagoula? Um, it's definitely about engagement. And um, one of the ways that this, the city council in particular can encourage that, that engagement uh, is through our boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, I believe we have about seven that the uh, seven boards, committees, and commissions that the council itself appoints members to. That equates to about 50 different people out in the community uh, who can be, can represent their city, help make decisions, and anything from the service commission to the historic district uh, uh, down to the library uh, committee. So I believe those organizations, those boards, are the way that we can get more people involved. Uh, getting people interested into, the, into the, these boards so that we have multiple applica applicants for every open position, uh, letting everyone know that, that you don't have to be an expert in that field, come get involved. Also, uh, transparency is, is a very key thing right now. And um, no one wants to think that decisions are being made by a, by, in a closed room by people who don't have your best interest in mind. These boards are the best way to have that. See how the, their decisions flow into the council, how all these decisions that are made and all this, this good work done by your, by your neighbors flows into what makes our city great. Uh, maybe uh, posting the minutes, posting the information that is discussed in the meetings, maybe an executive summary, something like that that would let people know that this is what goes on or it, uh, uh, straight live stream like we're doing this event. I think those, those would go a long way to getting people to feel like they're involved in our community and to see the process uh, being the process going on and serving you uh, as a citizen. Thank you, Patrick. Dr. Johnny Walker from Ward 3. People believe the economy of Pascagoula is not doing well. What are the gaps in our local economy and how would you recommend filling them? I think the biggest caps, again, come back to small businesses. You're not going to convince me that we have, truly have an economic problem when we have Ingalls out there that is, has tons of jobs up for grabs right now. Chevron's hiring again. Singing River's looking for nurses left and right. So there's plenty of, of, of places for economic growth on an individual basis if you're willing to go out and look for these jobs. Uh, and that's on the large industry. Again, what's the driving force of, of not just Pascagoula, but typically the, the entire United States, is small businesses. It's giving these people an opportunity to go out and try to make something on their own. The, uh, if you want this, again, this town to grow economically, you're going to have to do something to provide some type of, of, of structure for small businesses to want to come back and create you know, jobs and wealth for, for people. That's what I would like to see. Again, you know, as your councilman, I may not be a lot of things. I will probably never be a politician, and I will apologize to you for that. But I will be the strongest supporter of small businesses that this community has ever seen. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walker. Mr. Burt Hill from Ward 4. Our city has aging infrastructure such as street flooding and street repair that require attention. While we understand you cannot fix all of these issues in one term, how do you view these terms in priority? And what is your long-term vision for resolution? Our infrastructure problem goes way back. And uh, I know that the people that work on it do a great job. It's time consuming. There are a small bunch of people that, that do the work, uh, but the water lines, the sewer lines, the gas lines have to be replaced. It's just typical basic maintenance that has to be done. And it has to be done year round. Uh, the uh, UP that does most of the work, I guess, I guess they're still doing the work in Pascagoula. Uh, they do a fantastic job. They're short in number. They're short on funds. So they have to, you know, dig a hole in the street, fix a water line, fill it up. Uh, they, they do what they can, 
as fast as they can. I know there's a big project going on on Ingalls Avenue right now to help out the uh, East Bank. And uh, when I was on the council four years ago, we, we were excited that they were starting to do some work on the East Bank. And I know that project's costing a good bit of money, and, and a lot of the funds that would be for regular maintenance of our infrastructure is probably being spent down there. Which, you know, you've got to put paint on your house to keep it alive, and you've got to do work to get these businesses back in here. I know it's starting to sound a little repetitious from all of us, and because kind of it all boils down to what we up here can do for Pascagoula and how we can make living conditions, our utility business, and all that better. But we're all talking about the same thing, trying to make the cost of living as affordable as we can, taxes as affordable as we can, and, and make Pascagoula number one again. We've been number one before. We can be number one again. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Chris Langston from Ward 5. Chris, people believe the economy of Pascagoula is not doing well. What are the gaps in our local economy and how would you recommend filling them? Um, I think the gaps in our, our, our local economy, obviously, uh, we, we start off with a gap because we have a debt to, re, to, uh, to repay. Um, but there again, when you look at the, uh, I think it was mentioned earlier about our, uh, our insurance prices, you know, we've got to, we've got to work with our, uh, uh, not only our city leaders, but our county, our uh, state, and our federal partners to try to figure out uh, how, do, how we mitigate those rising insurance prices. I know, you know, you can go anywhere in any corner of the city, and you're, you're going to hear the same thing. It's the insurance, the rising prices of insurance are making these, these homes unaffordable. So we've got to tackle that, I mean, hard, fast, and quick. Um, and that's, I think that's what creates a, a big gap. Now, um, we've got to be, and I've already said it probably a thousand times, we've got to be, create an environment uh, of, of openness uh, to where people would want to come here. Uh, if, are we going to get rid of the rising insurance prices right off the bat? Probably not. But if we could still, I mean, if we're all doing it, certain, these other people can do it too. We just have to give them an environment of, of wanting to be here. Um, we, we all have challenges. Uh, we've all been dealt heavy blows uh, with dealing with, you know, the wrath of these storms and what they can do. Uh, but uh, we just got to be smart about what we're doing and, and, and tackle the, you know, the big elephant in the room, the insurance prices. So. Thank you, Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going into the last round. We're going to start with Patrick Gatchel, running for at-large. Patrick, what do you consider Pascagoula's greatest selling point, and how do you plan to leverage that point to revitalize residential and commercial growth? So I'll agree with uh, everyone uh, that's gotten this question before. People are a huge asset and one of our greatest. I think one of the, the uh, biggest things that we have going for us is location, location, location. Uh, this town, uh, we have access to the, to the uh, Pascagoula River, which is a great place for recreation, a great place for economy. Uh, we have access to the, to the Gulf itself, the Mississippi Sound, which brings in Chevron, which brings in uh, the, the ships uh, coming into the home port, also uh, uh, enables us to have Ingalls as well. Um, uh, Ingles and Chevron, jobs, location, location, you want to live here, you've got a short commute to some of the best work in the state. Ingles uh, um, and Chevron, uh, Halter as well, and also Rolls-Royce, which is expanding as well. So uh, if you want to live here, location-wise, you are next to the best, one of the best performing uh, place for jobs that you can, that you can get. Um, also location. We are close to major arteries where you can get around the coast. So living here, living in a small town, getting that small town feel, but still being able to access New Orleans, Mobile, Pensacola, 
and, um, and the surrounding area. Um, uh, if we can sell that location, if we can explain to people what it means, uh, what we've got here and the ability to live in a place that's naturally beautiful, the sunsets, the river. I remember being absolutely homesick every time I saw a sunset and realizing that it's not anything compared to what I, used, what I grew up with. So um, the location that we have and a little, and definitely the people, uh, I think are the, huge, the best, biggest assets that we have in town. Thank you, Patrick. Dr. Johnny Walker from Ward 3. Pascagoula has an aging infrastructure, such as street flooding and street repair, that require attention. While we understand that you cannot fix all of these issues in one term, how do you view these terms in order of priority? And what is your long-term vision for resolution? Short and long-term. The, uh, I, I'm about fairness here. The worst first. The worst projects that need to be done, that are the most crucial and the most uh, in need of, of emergency care, you do them first. That's just the way that it is. And once you get that, you move on to the smaller projects and the easier projects, and then you get those done. But let's let's fix the worst first. The uh, you know the, they're trying to fix some of the streets. I appreciate that. There's some lighting concerns in, in my community. You ride down some of the streets, there's no lights. The uh, flooding in, is, is still a problem, even though they've done some sewage drainage uh, fixing, still a problem. Like they brought up earlier, our insurances are outrageous. Uh, we definitely need to talk to some insurance adjusters and, and look at some federal, you know, some, some type of federal assistance as far as we got to do something to get some of these rates down. It's hard to tell you know, to get somebody to want to move into a home when they're going to be paying five thousand dollars a year in insurance. Sometimes your insurance note is more than your house note. It's absurd. So, but again, my 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 plan is let's fix the worst problems first and move from move on from there. Thank you, Dr. Walker. Burt Hill, Ward Four. Bert, how do you plan to involve residents in the decision-making process in Pascagoula? Just like we're doing tonight, you got to have meetings like a Ward 4 meeting, a Ward 3 meeting, a Ward 5. Get your citizens together. If they have problems, meet somewhere. Meet down here. Uh, I've had meetings at the country club when I worked down there. Residents wanted to have a little, just a little neighborhood meeting. And I opened it up wide and let them come down there and have a meeting. Get them together. Let them express to the council and the mayor whoever's behind there. Well, I don't know if any four of us are going to be elected or not until they count the, boat, the votes. But you got to get the citizens involved in your ward and say, hey, if you got a problem, bring it to us. If we don't know about it, there's no way we can solve it. So uh, get out. Have local meetings, have have ward meetings. You know, it doesn't it doesn't take but an hour, a little bit over an hour, maybe, to find a place and and tell your tell your citizens. With all the communications we have nowadays, with Facebook and emails and uh, any way you can communicate with people, get them together. If they got a problem in their neighborhood, have a meeting. Let them let them all express what they feel, because that's who we're up here to satisfy are the residents. It's not about me and these other three guys. It's about what we can do for the city and our residents. Thank you, Bert. Yes, Chris Langston, Ward 5. Chris, the city of Pascagoula's population is half white, a third black, and 12% Hispanic. How do you plan to ensure representation of all segments of the population in your role as city official? Um, when you talk about the uh, diversity jumps out when, when, you, when you make that, uh, when you ask that question. Uh, having spent 25 years in the Air Force, uh, anybody who's spent time in the service knows those are the most diverse uh, 
uh, organizations and groups you go by. Uh, and it takes everyone. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what you did. It's about one team, one fight. You know, it, it, it's you have to come together and work for a common goal. Um, so, much like my ward, Ward Five, it's it's the largest stretching ward. It goes and it covers. Every, I mean, every everything that goes on in Pascagoula goes on in Ward Five, and it has the probably the most diverse. I wouldn't say I'm not going to get up here and say it's the most diverse, but it's it's if it's not, it's very very close to being the most diverse. But the one key thing about diversity is not only recognizing that people come from all walks of life or come from you know different ethnic backgrounds or races. It's it's about the inclusion portion of it. You know, it's it's involving everyone. Everyone must be included. When we got up here and talked about community engagements and getting everyone involved, we weren't picking, you know, uh, whites, blacks, Hispanics. It's all of us. So we all, as a community, must come together to tackle, you know, the events. And diversity is all part of it. Diversity and inclusion uh, is how you do that. So, good question. Ladies and gentlemen, that is, concludes our question and answer portion. We're going to go into closing statements. Each candidate will have three minutes to end this evening. We're going to start with Patrick Gatchel, Councilman at Large. Excuse me. Uh, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for everyone who tuned in on Facebook and uh, on YouTube. Thank you for the council. Thank you, Deborah, for, for moderating. I've thoroughly enjoyed answering these questions tonight and actually and also hearing the answers from my um, um, from, uh, from the other candidates. Um, I'm passionate about Pascagoula. I, I truly love our town. Um, I want to see Pascagoula grow, and not just a couple of neighborhoods and not just a couple of wards. I want to see the entire town grow. Uh, I'm, I'm invested he here. Uh, my wife and I bought a business on Chico Street. I live in South Pascagoula. My grandfather lives in Pinecrest. I grew up in North Pascagoula. This is, this is my town, and I want to see the whole town do well. Um, and when I say I'm invested here, I don't just mean financially. I mean emotionally. I live here. I work here. I worship here. I uh, recently became a deacon in my church, and, and to be honest, it's one of the greatest honors I've ever, I've ever gotten. Uh, service to my family, service to my country, service to my city are of the utmost importance to me. Um, when we ask people to come and move here, when we ask business to invest, what we're asking them to, is, is to do is to believe in us. And the only way we're going to get people to believe in our town is to have a great plan for our town. I have a plan that shows exactly what we're going to do if we were, if we were given that infrastructure money, uh, exactly what we're going to do if you're a small business and you decide to invest here. Um, we need to have a plan, a strategic plan, a budget plan, and we need to execute on that plan. I feel that my experience that I have in the Navy, my experience with government finance, and now my experience at the shipyard has prepared me for this role, has prepared me to help build that plan and then to execute it. I built, I built budgets for the government for, for 12 years, and now what I do for the, for the, um, for the Navy and for Ingalls is I, I manage a plan. I take people who don't really want to agree on how to do, do something, sit them down at a table, and get them to collaborate. I get them to work together, and I get, to, I get them to, to come together to work to a common goal. If you'd like concrete proof, just go down to the Inner Harbor. LPD 28 is where I work every day. Um, like I said, I'm passionate about this town. I love this place. I chose to bring my children here and raise them, and I want them to have the, the experience that I had growing up, and I don't want to go back to some version of my town that I remember. I want this town to be better than it has ever been. I want, I, I want people to look at this place and say, oh my goodness, like, what, you know, how did they do that? What, what, you know, what do they have that we don't have? And I think we're so close. I think we're, we're just we're right at the edge of this town just going, just growing exponentially and wonderful things happening. And I ask for your support on April 6th. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick Gatchel. Dr. Journey Walker, Ward 3. I'm not even gonna lie, I was not prepared for this last question. I didn't know this was gonna be part of it. The, uh, 
But let me tell you something. My biggest goal for Pascagoula is I want my son, when he grows up, to feel the same way I do about this city. I want him to go, Dad, and he doesn't have to start a business if he wants to work for Chevron or the hospital or Ingalls, if he wants to be a mechanic or do whatever he wants to do. I want him to have the same desire to do it in Pascagoula that I do. Everything that I do, I try to do in Pascagoula. I'm the weirdo who shops at Jerry Lee's probably 95% of the time so I don't go to Walmart so I can support a local business. You know, my goal, again, like he said, I would love to see Pascagoula at a minimum double the size like it used to be 10, 15 years ago. We talk about, you know, diversity and the things that we can do for our community. And so a lot of us do all try to give back. We volunteer our time playing baseball. We volunteer our time, you know, with organizations trying to put on you know, charity events to, to help support local things. Um, again, I've been a small business owner for over 20 years. I see over at minimum, well over a hundred people every single week. And the one thing that I find absolutely amazing, I don't care what your background is in Pascagoula, when you talk to everybody on an individual basis, I don't care if you're rich, you're poor, you're black or you're white, we all have the same problems. When you discuss it on an individual, on an individual basis with everybody, you have the same problems. You might disagree on how to fix them, but you're still having relatively the same things going on in your life. Whether it's issues with your job, issues with your kids, issues with schoolwork, we have the same things going on. So, you know, if we can come together as a community and, and what Bert was saying, what I would love to see, you know, as city council, if I'm elected, is to have town hall meetings where you invite citizens to come up and write down the things that are important to them and, and, and what they need help with. We'll look at those and we'll, again, we start trying to fix the worst first. But let's grow Pascagoula, let's do things to get small businesses back in here and let's keep a pride in this community. You know, don't throw the, your, your cigarette butt out on the street anymore. Let's keep it clean, let's keep pride in this community. Let's love this city. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walker. Burt Hill, Ward 4. It's like I said on that last question, we're all beginning to sound a little uh, ditto, follow the, follow the leader, but uh, just like Johnny said, uh, this is small town USA. I don't care what you think about it because everybody knows everybody. And uh, like shopping at Jerry Lee's, if I don't go in there for two days, Susan and Mark probably send flowers to the house. They'll think I'm sick. Well, uh, yeah, I do. My wife busted me just this week because I wouldn't go to Ocean Springs to eat dinner for our son's birthday. And I said, what's wrong with eating here? She said, you just won't go anywhere and spend money, but Pascagoula will. Yeah, I said, try not to, you know? What's wrong with spending money here? We got some decent places to eat. We wound up at Brady's, about eight of us, and we ate, had a great meal, left there, went and ate some more at the Hilton. They got a pretty good restaurant there, too. So uh, we got some good places to eat. You don't have to go out of town to have a party or have a good meal. Uh, get down to uh, Ingalls Avenue, eat at Bozo's. There's some parking lots full every time you go by there. They're doing great. What will draw people to Pascagoula to live here? Tell them about our schools. We have two good schools here, not just one. We have Pascagoula School District, Pascagoula Goche School District, and we also have Resurrection, which is a great Catholic school. I've had uh, kids, grandkids graduate from there, and uh, Pascagoula also. Uh, nothing wrong with their education. Uh, they're doing great. Um, so education is not a problem. Come here, go to school, get an education, go to college, get a better education, and then, and then pick your field, where you want to go to work. Uh, have a grandson that graduated at Resurrection, graduated at Mississippi State, 
went straight to Branson and took over three golf courses. He grew up on the Pascagoula Country Club down here when he was about 12 years old. He could run every piece of equipment I had. So it, it's not all about uh, putting ships together or making, making uh, oil or making gasoline out of Chevron. There's a lot of things that you can do for a living in Pascagoula, Mississippi. We have good schools. We have, hopefully we have good leaders, as I look around. I uh, don't know who will be on the council next year, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll do, if whoever's elected will do the best they can, I promise you. And uh, as far as the uh, industry here, we're gonna have a new president of the shipyard, a lady, and which I think is great. Uh, the only thing bad about it is she lives in Mobile. She needs to own a house in Pascagoula if she's going to be the head of the Ingalls shipbuilding down here. Uh, I remember when Phil Durr took over down there and Trent Lott told him, you're going to live in Pascagoula and run that, you need to buy a house in Pascagoula. Next week he did. So uh, if you're going to work here, live here, go to school here, and enjoy us. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Chris Langston, Ward 5. I guess it's safe to say uh, he who goes last uh, decides who all gets to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I'll try to be the, the fastest few minutes uh, as I possible. But uh, like Bert said just a second ago, uh, you're, I'm probably going to echo a lot of the same things that, that Patrick and Johnny and Bert have said. Uh, but, I mean, growing up in this town is, I, I, it's so fantastic. There, I mean, there's, there's, there's no short of opportunities to have fun in this town. It doesn't, whether you're going up the river or up, you know, down the river, out the, you know, you know, out to the islands from the Gulf Coast, uh, the food, the people, you know, the community. Uh, I, I remember when I, when I, before I embarked on, the, uh, joined the Air Force, uh, this place was fantastic. I mean, I could not, I, once I left, and I was, it didn't take me very long to realize, I was like, I cannot wait to get back to Pascagoula. Uh, I always told my kids, I said, I, you, know, you know, when we would come back and visit, I said, living in Pascagoula is the most fantastic thing you'll ever be involved with. And it, having met so many people, you know, while being in the, in the service in the Air Force, uh, people would always ask, well, where are you from? And I'd say, you know, Pascagoula, Mississippi, and they were like, and you, do you know how to spell that? And I, I'd say, well, it's, it's pretty easy. Once you, you know, you get taught in school from an early age on how to spell Pascagoula. So, but uh, I would always try to describe to them. They're like, well, we, tell me a little bit about it. And I was like, it's, I can't say enough of how fantastic it is. There's, there's no, it's just that. It's fantastic. So when I got ready to retire, I told, you know, I asked my kids, I said, oh, it was a redundant question. I already knew where we were going. But, uh, Asked them, I said, where do you want to go, you know, after this? They said, we want to go back home to Pasadena. So, you know, when I drove out the gate that last time, uh, my oldest daughter and I drove straight, you know, from Fayetteville, North Carolina, all the way to Pasadena, Mississippi. Uh, and, and I want every, you know, I want all our kids to be able to, you know, to grow up in Pasadena, go do great things, but know that they have a home to come back to in Pasadena. And, and it's our jobs to continue to make it better than it was when we lived here and better for them, not today, tomorrow, but for the future so they can bring their kids back here to make home. So uh, I guess it's time for us to go home. Thank you, Chris. Now we'll turn this over back to Paige Roberts, Executive Director of the Jackson County Chamber of Commerce. Okay, we have come to the close of our municipal forum. I want to thank you candidates. It is so very clear how much time and effort you each put into preparation for this event. And I want to speak on behalf of my staff that put in so much time and effort to make this forum possible. Thank you for the time and effort you put in. And I want to thank those of you who are watching through Facebook and the WGUD YouTube channel. 
uh, for taking the time to be a more informed voter. Keep in mind that because this is on Facebook Live, as well as the WGUD YouTube channel, it can be watched after we close in the next 60 seconds. So please share it and, and talk to your fellow voters about it so that they too can be more informed. We live in a democracy and whatever the outcome is, is great, but it's mostly important that the voters go in informed and educated. Share and watch, and most importantly, vote on April 6th. It's four weeks from today. And keep in mind, in the city of Pascagoula, all of the seats will be decided in the Republican primary. So the only chance you'll have to vote in the city of Pascagoula to elect a candidate will be April 6th in the primary. Again, thank you for uh, tuning in and be sure to continue to share